Hey folks, Russ Tyndall here with Blue Line Wood Flags. About a year ago, I put together a video on YouTube showing you how I build Blue Line Wood Flags. Since that time, uh, some of my processes have changed, largely due to some tool upgrades and shop upgrades. And I felt it appropriate that I uh, produce another video showing you uh, how I do it. So rather than put this video uh, to music like I did the last time, uh, I decided that I would do a voiceover. So what we're going to be doing is uh, building this flag right here. This is a blue line wood flag for a California Highway Patrol Sergeant. And I'm going to take you through step by step on how we do this using the CNC machine. So come on out to the shop and join me and let's go have some fun. All right, so let's dive right in. Here you see a program called VCarve Pro on the screen. I use VCarve Pro to do all the drawing and toolpath specifications. When using a CNC machine, you will need some type of CAD CAM software to not only draw your design, but also tell your machine how to cut it out. There are many good programs out there, but I choose VCarve Pro made by Vectric. For my workflow, in addition to using VCarve, I personally find it easier to use Adobe Illustrator to design my graphics and then import them into VCarve in an EPS file format. The actual construction process begins by gluing up a wood panel which I will use to create the flag. Usually it will require anywhere between two and four boards glued edge to edge to make one flag panel. The boards are cut oversized at this point and will be cut to final dimension in the next step. You never want to do a panel construction starting out with wood that is already cut to its final dimension. Here I have two wide enough boards for the project. I'm simply applying glue to one edge of each. I'll butt the two edges up together and clamp them using parallel clamps. Once the panel is dried and has been removed from the clamps, it's time to cut it to final dimension. Here I'm doing a rip cut on the table saw and getting the panel to the flag's proper height. Here I've already cross cut one clean edge. I'm simply marking the final width of the project. Using a woodworker's square, I mark this measurement on the face and on the edge of the panel. Here I am positioning the panel on my cross cut sled. I'm aligning the mark I made in the previous step with the zero clearance cut line on the sled. Once aligned, I'll run the final cross cut and the panel will be to the proper height and width. Cross cut sleds in my opinion are a central part of any woodworker shop and make often difficult cuts easier and safer. Once the panel's been cut to dimension I take it over to the drum sander. This machine makes sanding the front and back faces of the panel effortless. In this instance we're using oak. Because I use a stain as you will see soon, I sand with 120 grit. I find that if I sand it any finer, the oak has a difficult time taking the stain. After I finish with the drum sander, I hit the edges of the panel with a random orbital sander. Before I bought my drum sander, I used the orbital sander for everything. Here all I'm doing is cleaning up the wood with a tack cloth before I stain it. Okay, here I am staining the panel. I can't stress enough that taking your time on this step is key to a beautiful final result. I use a water-based stain by Minwax. The color tint is called charcoal. On all of my flag builds, I apply two coats. I apply the first coat and just let it air dry. The stain will cause the grain to swell and raise up. I then sand the stain surface with 220 grit sandpaper and then apply the final coat. Some woodworkers use water to raise the grain sand it, and apply one coat of stain. This is perfectly acceptable, however, I find that two coats of stain will give deeper penetration and more consistency. For this video, I'm only showing the first application and have sped up the segment so you don't have to sit through the whole staining process. Here I am positioning the piece onto the CNC machine. Proper placement is vital to make sure all the cuts go where they are supposed to. Here I am getting ready to do the first cut. I'm zeroing the bit with the material surface. 
Each milling bit will require this. If we didn't zero out each bit, the subsequent cuts would be too shallow or too deep. Here comes the fun part, watching the CNC machine do its magic. Here you will see short video clips of each tool path being cut with various milling bits to create the flag. This video would be too long if I put the entire process in at regular speed, so I've edited it down a bit. I know I said I would narrate the video in the beginning, but for this part, kick back and enjoy. We'll pick it up after the carving is complete and we pull the flag off the CNC machine. folks we are back hope the music was okay here I am simply masking off what will be the blue line I learned from past projects to always put some craft paper down over the parts you don't want stain on hmm I wonder what happened to lead me to that process let's just say I've had some mistakes along my journey here I am adding the blue line again I use the Minwax water-based line of products I think this one's called navy blue if I'm not mistaken and as I did with the black color, two coats with a 220 grit sanding in between coats is necessary for a beautiful end result. What I'm doing here is removing some masking tape which I had previously put in place so I could stain the end grain and carry the black stripes around the sides. I really feel this attention to detail gives the piece a more completed look and adds an additional touch that you don't find with some other flags out there on the market. Once the project is dried sufficiently, it goes back onto the CNC machine for any text that is to be carved into the blue line. This is customer specific. Some customers like to have their name and badge number or their dates of service, while others prefer a colored line without text. The next step in the build process is to attach the standoffs on the back of the flag with glue and brad nails. These standoffs actually serve two purposes. First, and probably the most important, is that they provide structural support. 
Secondly, they provide a means to mount the flag onto the wall. When finished, the flag will stand off the wall by about three quarters of an inch. The standoffs will hide the mounting hardware as well. One of the last things we do is throw a little branding on the back of the flag. Hey, why not, right? While the piece is on the CNC machine, I'll use a keyhole bit and cut one into each standoff support. These keyholes are exactly in line with each other to ensure a perfect horizontal mount by the client. Before final finishing, I also do a quick sanding on the back of the flag as well. Finally, the last step of the flag build is to give the piece its finish. I use a high quality spray lacquer. For small projects such as one or two flags at a time, I use Deft brand in a rattle can. I prefer a semi-gloss finish. For larger projects or multiple flags at the same time, I like to use Mohawk semi-gloss lacquer, which I apply using a spray gun and an air compressor. One of the nice things about lacquer is that it doesn't require sanding between coats. The downside is that it's not waterproof, but that's not a problem because the flags that I make are made to be displayed inside. Well, here's the finished product. As you can see, the end result turned out just fantastic, and the CNC machining provides unparalleled quality and detailed carving. I hope you've enjoyed watching this build process. If you like what you saw, please smash that like button, subscribe to the channel, and hit the notification bell to be reminded when new content is posted. Thanks, everybody. Be well.